the author Skloot, through lengthy research and crafty writing, introduces us to the real woman behind the cells. What's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Read the Right Thing. I'm Eric. I first saw this book. Natalie Portman was reading this in a movie called Annihilation. Natalie Portman plays this character who's a biologist, and she's sent to this mysterious place where animals and things are mutating to figure out what happened with her husband. Her husband never returned. So I remember I saw her reading this book, and I thought, oh, that looked kind of like an interesting title. So then I looked it up, and turns out other people were interested in it too, and they found out that she was reading The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. That's something that I tend to do sometimes. I'll be watching movies or TV shows, and someone will be reading something, and I'm always fascinated, and I always want to see what it is they're reading. So I always try to pay attention to that. I've seen some kind of cool ones, like, for example, from Entourage, Ari Gold's wife was always reading David Foster Wallace. So that movie came out a few years ago, and I'd forgotten to pick it up. I decided to read the book this year, after I saw on social media from a museum and a local bookstore here that they chose this book as their book club. Now, I'm not a member of the book club and I didn't participate in it, but I did go pick up a copy from my library and I read through it pretty quickly. Rebecca Skloot is an American journalist and science writer. Her first book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, spent six years on the New York Times bestsellers list. Skloot first learned about Henrietta Lacks when she was just 16 in a basics biology class. Henrietta Lack's name was written on a blackboard. Her cells and the importance of her cells was mentioned briefly, and then her name was erased. But something about her name stuck with Rebecca Skloot, and she had to learn more. She went up to the professor, and the professor had no other answers other than she was a black woman, she passed away, and her cells became extremely important to the scientific community, which left Skloot with the question, you know, who was this woman? What was her story? This book is part scientific research, biography of a family, and narration on how Skloot came in contact with the hard-to-reach family of Henrietta. And I really enjoyed this book. It seems like I've been reading a lot more nonfiction than I usually do. I usually try to, you know, read novels and things like that. But the last couple books I've read have been nonfiction. The nonfiction that I've read has been well-researched and written. I'm in awe at the time it must have taken to research these stories. To me, it is a different experience reading nonfiction versus fiction. With fiction, I'm usually marveling at the creativity of the stories, the characters, and the writing style. However, with the nonfiction, I find myself marveling and thinking about really how much dedication it took to the research process. And the writing is still good, too. I still find myself enjoying the writing. I guess both types of books take dedication. You have to create with fiction. You have to create these stories and these characters and make them seem real. With these nonfiction, well-researched books, you just have to devour hours and essays and family stories, and you have to find the truth in all of this information. The scientific part of the story is really fascinating. Henrietta's cells were one of the most important scientific discoveries of the last hundred years. Her cells led to advances with in vitro fertilization, gene mapping, and other vaccines like polio and cancer. The scientific part, for me, who was never really good at math or science, I still found it enjoyable. Skloot does a good job of not dumbing it down, but just explaining it how you can understand it. I don't know if I quite grasped all the concepts, but I came away with a better understanding of, of gene mapping and cells and all the science stuff. I even texted a friend who works with cells at a college, and I said, hey, I'm reading this book, Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, She said cool and kind of nonchalantly just said, oh yeah, I work with HeLa cells. So the scope finally hit me that this woman's cells really benefited and anyone who works with cells has come across them. Skloot traces Henrietta and her family from being poor tobacco farmers to laborers in Baltimore. In 1951, Henrietta Lacks contracted cervical cancer. During a checkup, her cells were removed without her permission. The cells were then sent to this laboratory and a guy named George Guy to see if he could use them for research. Back then, doctors would freely take cells from patients, and instead of using the patient's full name, they would use the first two letters from their first and last names. So Henrietta Lacks, hence HeLa cells, were born. With the HeLa cells, George Guy quickly discovered that something fascinating was happening. Not only were these cells living, but they were also thriving and multiplying. Where most cells died within a couple hours, 
HeLa cells thrived and multiplied. But in the meantime, Henrietta was struggling with the cancer that was taking over her body, and the doctors couldn't really help her. It's disheartening to learn how patients were treated in the 50s, not necessarily because the hospitals had nefarious intentions, but they just didn't know any better. This is the same time period where they're playing cigarette ads during the Flintstones and encouraging people to use radium. They even treated Henrietta with radium, which was not helping. It was just poisoning her worse. There's a movie and a play, and I think you can even read a book called Radium Girls that also goes into this story of how the scientific community, they thought radium was this brilliant thing that was helping everybody, when in reality, it was just a poison. Before I get to the rest of my thoughts on the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks, please hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. The author, Sklut, through lengthy research and crafty writing, introduces us to the real woman behind the cells. Not surprisingly, the family of Henrietta Lacks felt a certain way towards the government, hospitals, and America in general. After all, they'd heard that people were getting rich off of their mother's cells, and they could barely afford medical payments, and they could barely afford their own prescriptions. It took Sklut years to gain the family's trust, and often she had to maneuver lightly and carefully so as not to offend them. But Sklut's persistence paid off, and she got in touch with the family to get the story. The author genuinely just wanted to tell the story of this incredible woman and the story of the family, as best as she could. But even then, the family would misunderstand and get paranoid about different things. It must have taken a lot of patience and human skills to be able to maneuver and talk with this family. But I think in the end, she really just wanted to tell the story as best she could and help the family. I don't want to sound too hard on the family here. They had feelings of paranoia and fear of really anyone talking about their mother. And I think for good reason. For the longest time, they were kept in the dark. They still didn't understand what had happened and what was going on. No one had taken the time, not the doctors, anyone, to really teach and educate the Lax family about what was going on. Henrietta had a daughter and her name was Deborah. And Deborah learned as much as she could about her mother and her cells and science from medical journals and papers. But with her limited education, there was really no way she could understand it all. Deborah started to blend science fiction with truth. She really believed there were clones of her mother somewhere. And she would quote from Jurassic Park saying, see, this is exactly what they did with my mother. They cloned these dinosaurs. That's exactly what they did with her. And I honestly, you can't fault her for thinking that. This book also brings up the ethical question, you know, should this have been done? Or should this be still going on? Should her family benefit is another question. These are some of the questions the book brings up. And I started to think about me personally, how I would feel. And would I care if they took my cells or perhaps my mother's cells? And I think I came to the answer that I probably wouldn't. If I had cancer and passed away and they took a small piece of my body and the cells ended up helping a lot of people, I probably wouldn't mind too much. I'd probably think it was a good thing. But I also come from a different perspective. I'm not in the same situation as the Lax family is. I'm so grateful that I can afford healthcare and I can afford prescriptions and medical visits and things like that. Whereas this family, they can't. So I can totally see how they would be saying, hold on, like our mother's cells are selling for $25 a vial and it's made all these millions of dollars for someone, yet we can't even afford our own health care. Sklut treats the feelings of the Lax families and the doctors fairly and openly. The doctors, they aren't portrayed as evil or these nefarious cell mongers, but the Lax family is also treated fairly. The family member most featured in the book is Deborah, Henrietta's daughter. Deborah is at odds with what happened and she has to make peace with what actually happened. The hardest part for me was reading about how much Deborah struggled when she learned different things. Science can describe things simply but brutally, as if it weren't a person but just an experiment on a mouse or a frog. I couldn't imagine having to learn the things that Deborah had to learn about her mother. There is a harrowing moment when a doctor's note describes Henrietta being cut open and her body full of cancerous tumors. And I could totally see how that would be shocking and difficult for Deborah to read. And at the same time, she wants to read and understand all these things that happened with her mother, but then she has to read difficult things like that. Deborah also felt since her mother's cells were still living, that her mother could somehow feel everything that was happening to her. So if a doctor treated her cells with AIDS or some other disease, she pictured her mother too receiving those diseases and feeling all of that, which would be a difficult thing to think. Sklut also delves into the history African-Americans have with medical science. African-Americans have a history of fearing and distrusting science and the medical establishment. Sklut researches and writes about different times in history where African-Americans were used in medical studies without their consent. 
One such time was the Tuskegee studies, where black men with syphilis were tested and observed. These men could have been cured, but they never were, and they were never given the choice. Other reasons for the distrust ranges between the lines of truth and folklore amongst the community. There's a New York Times review that says the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks is much more than a portrait of the Lacks family. It is also a critique of science that insists on ignoring the messy human provenance of its materials. So at times this book is disheartening to read. It was difficult. You go along on this journey with the Lacks family and you feel like you feel pain for them. You feel, you feel like this shouldn't have happened, but at the same time it's conflicting because their mother's cells did do so much for the world and advancing these vaccines to help millions of people. You just wish that it could be reciprocated somehow. The book ends with a beautiful moment though. There's a moment when Deborah and one of her family members gets to finally see and understand her mother's cells. They are shown a picture and the cells are lit up highlighting different parts of the cell. Now years of pain and stress couldn't be erased, but it seems the moment when a doctor took time to explain and notice Deborah was all it took to help her come to, come to peace. So I'm really glad I read this book. It was sad, insightful, at times funny, at times tear-jerking, but it's a really interesting story. And I think it's an important American story. I think we should all be familiar with this story just to open our eyes and learn about someone's perspective. So this book was definitely the right thing for me. If you've read this book, let me know what you thought in the comments. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And thanks for tuning in.